This is the Pixel 4. Originally released in 2019, this thing is nearly three years old at this point. Okay, confession. I've been a fan of Pixel phones since the beginning and have owned nearly all of them throughout the years, with the exception of one, the Pixel 4. Is this thing still any good today and maybe worth buying? Let's dive in. First off, I'm loving this phone's build. It's small, by today's standards, but it feels almost perfect for one-hand usage. It really makes me miss when these smaller phones were more common and were offered alongside larger XL versions so everyone could just choose what size they want. The screen still looks really good as well. It's an AMOLED with a 90Hz refresh rate and watching videos and playing games on here is still really good. Now you might notice the rather large bezel on top. There's a reason for that, even though it does look pretty rough by today's standards. Google stuck a motion sensor in there that seemed at the time like it could have a lot of promise for hands-free use and an advanced facial unlock similar to what Apple offers in their latest phones. But then they pretty much did nothing with it. It does work really well with face unlock, which is nearly instantaneous and launches straight into the phone without needing an additional swipe gesture like the iPhones. As it stands right now, Google still hasn't brought face unlock to the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, though it was rumored at the time, and I find that I actually prefer it to the in-screen fingerprint reader on those models. The motion sensor can also be used with music controls like left and right swipes to skip or rewind tracks or a palm down gesture to pause music. It will also sense when you reach for the device and light up the always on display and begin preparing the face unlock feature so it works faster. But that's all it does. Literally three things. Google never added any additional features or even really refined what's here. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. The face unlock is the only one that really works consistently and the other two come off more as gimmicks than anything. Anytime I was listening to music and went to pick up the phone, the sensor would think I was swiping and the song would start over or skip to the next track. It ended up being a bigger hassle than anything, so I turned all those off after about a day of use. But performance is still really good. It's been updated to Android 12, so you get the latest build, although Google is only promising software and security updates until October of this year, so Android 13 will probably be the last one it gets, and that's kind of ridiculous. The phone would have no issue handling another year of updates with a Snapdragon 855 processor and 6GB of RAM. It's really snappy in day-to-day -day use and could be viable for another few years if Google would update it. And as 9to5Google recently pointed out, this phone deserves a longer lifespan than what Google is willing to give. Now that doesn't mean it has to end there, as with most Android devices, you can always keep it up to date with custom ROMs, but that does take a little bit of work and know-how that the average user might not be willing to do. Anyways, back to the phone. The dual speakers sound pretty good with content and get loud without static, but there's pretty much no bass. It has wireless charging, and I really love the matte finish on the back. It hides fingerprints really well, especially on this white version I have here. It also has all the Pixel exclusive features, like call screening to stop spam calls, which I would love to have on other phones. And I had completely forgotten this model also had the squeezable sides to launch the Google Assistant, which is a little gimmicky, but it's pretty cool in actual use. I know I'm kind of going on and on about this, but I really love the build and size for this phone. One downside to being nearly three years old is that the storage starts at 64 gigabytes. They do have a 128GB version, but it costs a little bit more. The camera situation is both good and bad. It was the first Pixel phone to offer dual cameras, but instead of adding an ultra-wide lens that most people would prefer, Google stuck in a 2 times telephoto lens. No, not this time. You're wrong. No way. Why do they do this? Who knows, but it definitely limits an otherwise great camera. Look, this thing can still produce some great pictures and offers great low-light photos, but an ultra-wide would have really been more useful in most situations when digital zoom is already available. The telephoto lens does offer more stable zoom photos, so it's not all bad. It's got some decent video options as well, but can only max out in video at 4K 30 frames per second, which is still pretty good. Bottom line, it's a Pixel phone, and you will still get some of the best point-and-shoot photos even today. Now, the battery life, on the other hand... If you go back and look at every review of this phone on release, they all mention how subpar the battery is. I guess the guy in charge of the sensor department was also put in charge of the batteries because they stuck a tiny battery in here. It's only 2800 milliamps and it struggles a bit, but it's not nearly as bad as you would think after reading the reviews. With heavy use, gaming, music, web browsing, you can definitely kill this thing in half a day. But with a little bit of management, you can stretch it out to a full day. I still averaged about four to four and a half hours of screen on time for the past week, which could be better, but it's not the worst I've ever used. And if you're really worried about battery longevity, Google did just announce a partnership with iFixit, similar to what Apple did recently, that is selling replacement parts so you can replace a battery if you ever need to down the road. So where does that leave us? Well, despite its odd choices with the motion sensor and very average battery life, I still really like this phone. 
I managed to find a brand new model for $250, and at this price or lower, it's definitely worth picking up, even today. It's got plenty of processing power and still takes great pictures, even three years later. That's not even mentioning the awesome Pixel-specific features. Keep the software situation in mind if you're thinking about picking one up, maybe look into the XL version, as that will give you a larger screen and a lot better battery life. But I'm happy with the smaller version. It really fills that one-handed usage and pocketability that I didn't even know I was missing. Anyway, that's about it for today. I appreciate you watching, and if you liked it, hit that subscribe button. Until next time. <laughs>